all mercy, the God of all consolation. And yeah, I don't even have my, my bulletin in front of me, but I do, I do, re oh, thank you, Dee. All right, so we have on, um, on page six just a few things, two things, actually three things to touch upon. The first one is that our Northwest Ohio Synod, thank you, our Northwest Ohio Synod Assembly uh, is going to be on Saturday, June 1st, that is in Bowling Green. Uh, at St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Bowling Green. It's one day, nine to five. We need two ladies and one gentleman to represent our congregation at that. If that's something that is of interest to you and you get to see a lot of the inner workings of our synod, uh, then please let me know about that. Uh, secondly, and that is uh, a number of you know Nancy Gardner. Uh, Nancy passed away early, early uh, this morning. Uh, she was in her mid-70s. Nancy had MS for like about 35 years. That's been a long, long, hard journey for her. She now is able to uh, experience a new body, and we rejoice with that with her. But please keep the family in your prayers and in your card ministry. Thirdly is the outreach committee is seeking input concerning um, for the outreach funds. And if you have any suggestions, we ask that you come and see Karen Ekin. Karen, if you can just uh, raise it, there you go. Uh, or the church office of the suggestions that you would have for her. We would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Uh, before we get into the, the choral introit, we are celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion today here at the 1030 service. It is in the round. And so we will have uh, three communion servers plus myself uh, with that. And uh, so consequently, we really should have uh, for today the brief order of confession and forgiveness. So I invite you to please turn to page 94 in the front of your hymnal, page 94, and let us enter into the brief order of confession and forgiveness. I invite you to stand at this time. If you're a guest with us today, welcome. It's great to see you here and hope we can see you again very, very soon as we gather together as God's people. Let us glorify our Lord as we acknowledge the presence of God in his creation and in our lives, hymn 843, 
Praise the one who breaks the darkness. as we gather together as God's people. Please turn with me to page 98 in the front of your hymnals. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord
with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And it is now time for Noah's Park Children's Church. of illumination. Before reading from the Bible, we seek the illumination of the Holy Spirit that we become receptive to the life-giving word, which comes to us through both the reading and the proclamation of scripture. Lord, open our hearts and minds for the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we are here with joy what you say to us today. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 40. <clears throat> Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has that not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers to, of this world to nothing. No so, sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground. Then he blows on them and, the, and they wither away, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or, tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Please read responsibly the Psalms 147 on page 3. Praise the Lord, how good is it to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise him. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Great is our God and mighty in power, his understanding has no limit. But the Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Praise the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, and I may share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thank you.
the good news of the Holy Gospel for you, God's people, as it is written in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Now, as soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. Well, that evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak, because they knew who he was. Now, very early in the morning, while it was dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Word of God, word of life. And please be seated. So grace be on you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our message today is based on the Corinthian passage that Patty shared with you just a few moments ago. And what we're going to be talking about today is a foundational relationship skill. And it's known as getting along, being able to get along with people. But what I what we need to do before we go much deeper into this is quite honestly just what it is and what it is not. So getting along is one of those foundational concepts of being able to interrelate with other people. And it's about understanding who that person is, where they're coming from, their heart, their mind, their point of view, all those type of things. It's not going along. Going along is something very different. Going along is where you're just going along with a person, and maybe you, you sacrifice your own uh, values or your own set of boundaries or beliefs or whatever that may be, and it's not about being a chameleon as well, where you say one thing to one group and then you say something very different to another group. Getting along is knowing how to get along with other people, and one of the keys to that and what Paul shares with us this morning in his letter to the church in Corinth is that essentially to get along with other people, one of those foundational things that we do is we listen and learn. It's really what it comes down to. We're going to see what Paul means by this, but just to listen and learn. Now, what I'm going to put on the screen here is a different translation than what you have in your bulletin. This is the message translation. I just decided to do this because perhaps it, uh, when you look at a, diff a few different translations, sometimes it helps things become just a little bit clearer. So that's what we're going to do here. In our reading from 1 Corinthians in the ninth chapter, and Paul is saying to the church in Corinth, and quite honestly, he's saying to us as well, two millennia later, as brothers and sisters in Christ, even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily. Now, this is his choice. He is not being coerced to do this. It's not being commanded or demanded for him to do it. He is doing this on his own volition. What is it that he's doing? Becoming a servant. It is my choice to become a servant. We could even say the word friend there. Become a friend to any and all. And why? In order to reach a wide range of people. And so what is Paul doing with that? In the next number of verses that you see in Corinthians, he's saying, so this is how I went about doing it. For the Jewish people, those of the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the teaching, and we would then expand that and say the Old Testament as well, he would say that for the Jewish people, I listened and learned to understand their heart and mind and to develop a friendship with them. And to the non-Jewish people, who would be Gentiles, I listened and learned about their points of view and to grasp their understanding of things so that I could build a connection and rapport with them. And then he goes on, and with the, the last group, which uh, he designates, he would say basically other people of other backgrounds and walks of life. And I listened and I learned from them to figure out their way of life and to establish a relationship with them. Now, my 
third year of seminary uh, was internship year. And so that meant that we were kicked off to somewhere outside of Columbus. And I landed in eastern Pennsylvania. Some of you are familiar with uh, parts of this story. So I learned um, that I was immersed in a very different culture, the Pennsylvania Dutch culture. And so at eastern Pennsylvania, that meant you were either Lutheran, United Church of Christ, Roman Catholic, Amish, or Mennonite. Now, I felt like a foreign missionary going there because different ways, different customs, to some degree, different beliefs, different piety, and to be brutally blunt, really a different sense of humor as well. So one of the things that I was taught early on was say, hey, wicker will, because they couldn't pronounce their Vs very well. It always came out as Ws. And so uh, part of my internship was also at a, the Lutheran home at Topton, which was a care center, nursing home. And I'd be walking down the, the hallway and some of the older people, you would hear them go, wicker will, wicker will. And we realized we need to change that to intern. That just works better. But um, in the church that I was, was serving in, where you learn all things about becoming a pastor and what you do and so forth, one of the, uh, again, with sense of humor, one of the code languages that there, or code phrases that they had was, they taught me, uh, mikafanga, and the response is, ya vansi hokabliva. Now, what that means is, uh, they would ask, hey, can you catch flies? And the response, if you knew the language and you were in with the group, was yes, while they are sitting down. Exactly. See, that's what I'm talking about. It was a very different kind of humor. You got to learn this stuff. And, and so the whole point was I had two choices. As an intern, in that culture in which I, I was definitely an outsider, an Auslander, as they would say, I could either go, you know, these people are weird, their ways are weird, their customs are weird, it's just all weird, and I refuse to learn about it, and I'm just going to be here a year, and then they ship me back to Columbus. Or, you learn the culture, you learn the ways, you learn the customs, you learn the humor, you listen, and you grow, and you learn about that. And why? I chose the second one, fortunately, because what came out of that? Developing of friendships and relationships, and some still to this day. Paul is saying this is what is so important in life, of how we go about developing a friendship with other people, to listen and learn, to express interest in another person's uh, beliefs, their ways, their customs, their interests, their hobbies, their work, their skills, their trade, all these type of things. It's how to get along with people, it's how to win with people. And this is what Paul is telling us. Now, this is really no new news, and some people have really made incredible careers out of this. Uh, leadership guru John Maxwell, one of his more well-known books, 25 Ways to Win with People. And then, of course, there's the all-time great uh, of this category of books, this genre of writing, uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends, and influence people. It's just a modern way of translating what Paul is trying to communicate with us. But it begs the question then, why? Why do we go about doing this? Or why was Paul going about doing this? Why would he even take some of the, the holy writ, the sacred writings that he was communicating to the church in Corinth? Why would he take the time to do this? What was his motive? Well, first and foremost, what we've been talking about, friendship, building relationships, building rapport with other people, and perhaps those that you didn't quite understand their ways or means, like when I was out in eastern Pennsylvania, relationship building. But Paul also had a deeper drive behind this, to not only build a friendship with folks, but also hoping that people could develop a friendship with Jesus. Hmm. And what we see coming out of this it's Paul's love for the Lord that by building a friendship with a person, hopefully somehow, someway, someday, that person would come into a God-saving life to have that gift of grace that comes from our Lord. And so we see in verse 22, why am I doing this, Paul says, 
to lead those I meet into a God-saved life, which begins in this life and continues after death into the kingdom of heaven. Paul writes to the church in Philippians. He goes, therefore, this is chapter 2, beginning with verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, and there's that friendship factor. He uses this word. It's very important for Paul. As you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation. Now, some people, when they hear that, they go, oh, we have to work for our salvation then. No, 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 Paul's not saying that. We can't work for our salvation because that's a gift that comes from God, made possible through the birth and life and death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus. What Paul is telling you and I is that in receiving that gift of grace of salvation, we're then to develop it, we're to grow in it, we're to strengthen it. Just like when you, you, for those of you who are working out, whether you're runners or lifting weights or stretching, whatever your form of exercise is, you are developing your body. And Paul is saying the same thing about your salvation, your faith, to develop it, to grow in it. The, the fancy church term for this is sanctification. And so work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God, not you, not me, not someone else, but God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And Paul even takes it one step further. Not only do I do this so that people can in some way, someday come into a God-saved life, but also because of the message, the gospel, the good news of God's love for you and for all. This is what is really the driver for him. The good news of God's saving grace. His love that comes in Jesus Christ. Now, a week from this Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday, you know what is happening a week from this Wednesday, do you not? Ash Wednesday, of course. I know that was the first thing that came to mind for each and every one of us here. Ash Wednesday, okay? Okay. So that's the day that kicks off the Lenten season. And of course, we have our midweek services and the rite of imposition of ashes. I've had a number of you uh, this last week and even today saying, Pastor, because of the special day that Ash Wednesday falls on, uh, instead of just a cross, are you going to put a heart on people's foreheads as a result of it? Yeah, I, I don't, I have a pretty good idea, honestly. I think that just might work. So that really leads me to the second thing. What else is uh, a week from this Wednesday? Of course, Valentine's Day. Yes, the holiday about love. And one of the things I think is very important for you and I uh, to realize with the holiday of love is that, indeed, Jesus is God's valentine for you. Now, some of you may be thinking, now why is pastor talking about Valentine's Day on this Sunday instead of next Sunday, which is a lot closer to Valentine's Day? I have observed over the years of my life that on the day of Valentine's Day, there is always a big line of gentlemen who are in the store, in the card aisle, and choosing that last minute card for Valentine's Day. Now, I gotta, uh, so I'm trying to give you a heads up, okay? Because by doing so, you have, what, 11 days, 10, 11 days, in order to, to impress that special someone. Now, I gotta admit, I just want all of you to realize, I have never been a participant in that kind of practice, just an observer, when I happen to be in the store on Ash Wednesday, oh, excuse me, Valentine's Day, yes, yes, because as my wife will tell you, I am such a romantic at heart. <laughs> yes, um, I could improve in that area. Yes, I most certainly could. So suffice it to say, and let's salvage this sermon as best as we possibly can, and that would be that Jesus is indeed God's valentine for you. And then you, in turn, are God's valentine.
for those around you, especially for those who have yet to have this God-saved life, a saving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Many times you hear me say, and at the end of every service, as we announce that concluding hymn, that we are sent out into God's creation as the hands and feet of Jesus. Showing our love is what we are doing, God's love, to this beautiful yet polarized and violent and broken world. So we are sent out into God's creation as the hands and feet of Jesus. We are being sent out into God's creation to be God's valentine because if there's anything that our world could really use a nice dose of, it is love. And we're not talking mushy, smushy love. We're talking about sacrificial, godly, gritty, tough, and even courageous, gutsy love. And that's what our world really really needs. Paul wrote the love chapter as we know it in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 13. In the chapter before, chapter 12, he talks about spiritual gifts, gifts of the Holy Spirit that are promised to Christians. You and I, who are followers of Christ, are promised at least one gift, spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit. And Paul talks about, it can, maybe it's knowledge, maybe it's wisdom, maybe it's prophecy, maybe it's teaching, maybe it's faith, maybe it's speaking in tongues or the interpretation of tongues, all these different type of things. But then at the end of that chapter, he says, ah, but now eagerly desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. And so what he is saying is, that's all really great stuff, but if you really want to know when it comes down to it, where the rubber hits the road, and what is the greatest gift of all that you can receive from God? It's love. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I'm just a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I mean, just bang, 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 you know? Um, some of you are old enough to remember this really weird uh, game show uh, decades ago. It's called The Gong Show. I mean, it was just irritating, it was obnoxious, and that's what Paul's saying. You know, if you don't have love, you're just like the gong show, and you're just annoying everybody. He said, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that I can move mountains, but don't have love, I'm a nothing. And if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may brag, but if I don't have love, I gain nothing. Paul is saying if love isn't part of your life, and if it's not operating in any way, shape, or form, no matter what you're doing, it just really doesn't amount to anything. So what he does in the book of Galatians, Paul goes further. He says there's fruit of the Holy Spirit, and they are love joy, and, and peace. You know, Irene is what it would be in the New Testament. Shalom in the Old Testament, meaning peace, a peaceful relationship, love that you have with God and you, with other people, and, and to be able to love yourself as well. Patience, which literally means long-suffering, that you stay with that person through thick and thin. Kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. But the first word First of this fruit of the Spirit that Paul uses is love. And love then translates and makes the difference for all these others that he lists there. And if you're one who, like me, really likes to eat, and, and my metabolism has now reached that point where you can no longer eat anything and just expect to burn it all off, um, because it just adds up, so I, I'm starting to watch more. Of course, that's, that's always been my problem. I watch what I eat rather than I need to watch what I eat. But this is a fruit that you can indulge in, and you can never have enough of it. And that's what Paul is reminding us. Now, you may, th th did you realize that since we're in the month of February, did you realize that this is a leap year? So we have 29 days in February, 
And that happens once every how many years? Four, okay. Now, does anyone know of someone who was born on February 29th? Okay, there's a few, all right? So, uh, they're, they're called leap year babies, okay? So for this, this friend or acquaintance or person that you know of, let's, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, he or she is now approaching the age of 50, and their birthday is coming up, and they are just really down and out and depressed about it because, oh, this year I'm turning half a century. One of the loving things you could do is go up to them and just say, oh, come on now, really? You're only 12 and a half years old. What's the problem? All right, for those of you, just do the math, all right? Four times 12 is 48 <laughs> and two years, 12 and a half. All right. But it can be a really loving thing to do, to be supportive, encouraging, uplifting, helpful, love. So let's, let's conclude here. Paul writes to the church in Rome, God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. As a Christian, as a follower of the way and the truth and the life, the one who is the shepherd and guardian of our souls, the one who is the lion of the tribe of Judah and the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the A and the Z, the first and last, the beginning and the end of time, his love has been poured into your heart through his Holy Spirit. It's there. It's just each and every day asking the Spirit to wake up and, to, and within you to be able to shine through and allow God's love to pour forth. So everything that, that we have been talking about here and what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians and his other writings as well. What people group do you have a heart for? What is that, that part of the population that maybe you just don't quite get or understand and would like to learn more about and how you listen and grow in that? And only to develop a friendship, but to help them develop a friendship with our Lord. Maybe it's uh, their economic background. Maybe it's their education background. Maybe it's certain hobbies or interests or work life. You know, whatever the case may be, what is that one group? Again, for me, on internship, the Dutch culture, that was an eye-opener. But it was also a defining moment for me. And it made a huge difference. I think when we experience those type of things, it can make a huge difference for each of us as well. So listen and learn, not to go along, but to get along. Not to sacrifice your convictions or your beliefs or your boundaries, but to understand another person's heart and mind and, and point of view, to develop a rapport, perhaps even a friendship, and maybe, maybe, just maybe as a result of that, they can develop a friendship with Jesus as well, a saving relationship in the God-saved life. Because that is a great act of love to those around you. And that is being God's Valentine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We rejoice in our Lord, hymn 773. Ah, oh, precious Lord, take my hand. Please stand.
turn to page 105 in the front of our hymnals, and let us proclaim our ancient future faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Lord Jesus, you are the shepherd and guardian of our souls. Teach us to number our days aright, Lord, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. We pray for peace and for the leaders in the Holy Land, as well as for, as well as for the leaders of our country. And prepare us, Lord, as we now set our direction towards Ash Wednesday in the holy season of Lent. We lift up to you this morning Stacy Cordy, Evan Adams, Kristen Westfall, Pam, Amanda, Katie Lindsay, Sean and Kim Kimmett, Harold Allen, and for the family and friends of Joelle Parker, Phyllis Leininger, and Nancy Gardner. May your word feed us, Lord, and your spirit lead us into the week and into the life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share God's peace with those around us. A reminder that our offering boxes are at both exits as we continue the 160-year ministry of St. Mark's uh, to our local community as well as national and global communities as well, making a difference in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Thank you, choir. Please stand. We turn to page 107 in the front of our hymnals. We continue our service of worship in preparation now to celebrate and partake of the sacrament of Holy Communion. Page 107, let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world. Signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ by the leading of a star he has shown forth to all nations in the waters of the Jordan you proclaimed him your beloved son and in the miracle of water turned to wine he revealed your glory and so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the host of heaven we praise your name and join their unending hymn <laughs> Almighty and merciful God, your most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so rich but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <laughs> Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to our Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated. If you are partaking of Pew Communion, I invite you to get your communion kit out at this time. In the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand. For the week to come, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We are sent out into God's creation be the hands and feet of Jesus to be God's Valentine, hymn 314, Arise, your light has come. 